Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about matter and its properties for today's um, lecture video. Apologies for the ambient noises or even the other noises that you would be hearing along the way, but nonetheless, let me just continue presenting this topic. We have here the following learning objectives. The first one is to describe matter and its distinct characteristics. Second is to differentiate the classifications of matter. Third is to cite examples of physical and chemical changes. So, ang gagawin po natin ay alamin kung ano ang matter at ano ano yung mga characteristics nito. Ikalawa ay alamin ano yung pinagkakaiba-iba ng iba't ibang classification ng matter. And pangatlo, alamin natin ano ano yung mga halimbawa ng physical at chemical changes. First one, chemistry, as we all know, is simply a field of study concerned with the uh, characteristics, compositions, and transformation of matter. Sa madaling salita po, ang pag-aaral ng chemistry ay patungkol lahat sa matter. Okay, yung karakteristik nito, yung composition niya, at paano siya natatransform from one form of matter or classification of matter to another classification of matter. Okay? Now, in terms of states, we all know from our primary studies in grade school that matter can be defined as anything that occupies space and has mass. So, ganito po yan. Ganito lang kasimple. As long as nag-occupy ng space at mayroong mass, matter po ang maitatawag natin doon. Matter exists in three states. We have solids, liquids, and gases. Now, as you can see in the image, solid, yung mga circle, Okay, it represents particle of the matter ay compact, dikit-dikit. Liquid ay medyo flowy, medyo may spaces sila between themselves. And the gases, you can see large spaces na po o medyo hiwa-hiwalay na yung mga molecules niya. Now, in the slide, you have here a table showing you the differences of the characteristics of the states of matter. In terms of shape, we see that solid has a definite shape, meaning to say, tulad po ng isang um, table. For example, ang table po ay, ang shape niya ay rectangular, definite ang shape niya being rectangular. Whereas, ang liquid, indefinite shape, meaning to say, ang liquid po ay wala siyang definite shape. Kukuwain niya yung hugis kung saan siya nakalagay. Takes the shape of the container. Say, for example, nilagay mo po sa isang tube-like na baso, ang magiging shape ng liquid ay tube. And gases does not have a definite shape or indefinite ang kanyang shape. In terms of volume, solids and liquids have definite volume, meaning to say we can easily compute or identify its volume, whereas gases, indefinite. Among the three solids, liquids, and gases, solids ang may pinangmataas na density. Liquids have density, which is quite lower than of solid, and among the three, gases will be having the lowest density. When we say density, ito po yung pagka-compact o pagka-dikit-dikit ng mga particle natin. So, among the three solids, as the name, as the name says, solids, compact, dikit-dikit ang kanyang molecule. And among the three, we know that solids cannot easily flow Liquids can flow and gases can flow. So, collectively, we can call liquid and gas as fluid. Pag sinabi po natin fluid, ibig sabihin po nun ay kaya mag-flow. So, liquids and gases, they are termed to be or collectively called as fluid, whereas solids, they cannot easily flow. So, nakakatakot naman po yan na nag-flow bigla ang mga solids natin tulad ng mga upuan, o kaya ng mga cellphone, nakatakot yun, imagine. But nonetheless, let me proceed. Now, this will be the classification of matter. Okay, so you have here pure substance and mixture. Under pure substance, we have elements and compounds. And under mixture, you have homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. Iisa-isahin po natin or ang kanilang pagkakaiba and definitions. First is we have pure substance. Under pure substance, we have elements and compounds. Now, what about pure substance? Pure substance says, have definite composition and distinct properties, meaning to say the composition are definite, we can easily identify them, and also the properties are distinct 
Okay, meaning to say, um, the substances or this form of matter, the properties are very distinct from each other. Okay? Elements. Now, elements in chemistry is simply the simplest form of matter because they can no longer be broken down into simpler substances. Meaning to say, say for example, you have your hydrogen element. Ang hydrogen po ay hindi na po pwede ma-break down into simpler substances. Although we can argue that an hydrogen element is broken down into, into its atom, tapos yung atom, sasabihin natin meron ba siyang proton, neutron, electron, yun naman po ay subatomic particles. Okay? Hindi po yun um, per se na sinasabi natin na mabibreakdown pa yung elements. Yun po ay parte o subatomic particles ng elements. But nonetheless, the base definition is that elements is the simplest or are, are the simplest form of matter. Because, again, the reason is because they can no longer be broken down into simpler substances. What about compounds? So, compounds are consists of two or more elements chemically united in fixed proportion. So, sa madaling salita po, if we have a group of elements as long as two or more, higit pa sa dalawa, dalawa o higit pa sa dalawa, compound na po ang tawag. Okay? So, we have pure substance, elements, compounds. So, let me give again an example. So, under pure substances, okay, sorry about my writing, we have elements. Ang elements po ay simplest form. Example are your elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. And then, we have your compounds. Ang definition po ay Two or more element. Two or more elements. So, say for example, H2O. Paano siya naging compound? Pilangin ilan ng element. Meron tayong elements hydrogen, oxygen. Dalawang hydrogen, isang oxygen. Meron ka ngayong dalawa o higit pang uri ng elements. Okay, yun po ang pagkakaiba. Basta elements, simplest form, compounds, ang keyword ay two or more elements. So, dahil sa compound na H2O, meron kang isang hydrogen or isang uri ng hydrogen at isang uri, uri ng oxygen, compound ang H2O. Okay? Next. Oh, this slide will just show you examples of elements such as aluminum, copper, um, carbon, mercury, and sulfur, and these are examples of compounds. You have nitrogen oxide, water, nitrogen dioxide, carbon dioxide. Okay? Next one, we move to mixtures. Now, what about mixtures? Now, mixtures are a combination of two or more substances in which substances retain their distinct identities. Meaning to say po, ang mixture ay pinagsama o pinagcombine na dalawa o higit pang substances. Yung nauna po natin dito, di ba, may mga pure substance tayo. So, pagtagpi-tagpiin, pagsamasamahin natin in an orderly manner ang mga substances, we create a mixture. But the keyword is that it must retain their distinct identity. Dapat po, mariretain pa rin nila identity nila. Components of mixtures are not chemi chemically combined. Okay, so every time we create a mixture, we only do it physically. They are only physically combined, not chemically. And then components can be separated from one another physically. Since pwede natin silang pagcombinein o pagsamahin physically, we can also separate them physically. Now, let's differentiate homogeneous and heterogeneous under mixture. Homogeneous mixtures, now these are mixtures where in when we mix two substances, the composition is uniform and then the components are difficult to distinguish. What does that mean? Meaning to say, if we combine substance A and substance B, ang kanilang composition or state of matter ay uniform or iisa na lang. At ang mga component, si A and B, ay mahirap nang madistinguish. For example, um... Water, okay, so let me write that one. Say, for example, water. The state of water is liquid. And then we have salt being solid. So we have two different substances. Gayon, gusto natin paghaluin. 
In reality, pag hinalo po natin ang tubig at asin, mayroon tayo ngayong, um, we have a salt solution. Okay, this will result into a salt solution. Now, water and salt, in reality, when we combine them, ang resultant state or composition nila ay liquid. Okay? Plus, components are difficult to distinguish. Meaning to say, hindi na po natin madaling makita yung salt sa salt solution. Hindi na natin makita yung pagka-solid ng salt. Kasi, pinaghalo na natin siya together with water. So, una po, nung magkaiwalay pa lang sila, liquid water and solid salt, na-identify pa natin na may water and then may salt na solid. Pero nung pinaghalo na natin si water and salt, naging salt solution na sila, okay, we only have uniform composition or uniform state which is liquid, and then hindi na natin ma-distinguish si, nasa na si solid salt? Diba? Hindi. Hindi na natin sila makita. O siya makita, specifically that component. Okay, so that is homogenous. Now, what about heterogeneous mixture? Now, heterogeneous mixtures lacks uniform composition, meaning to say we can easily identify um, the components. At least, there will be um, two faces that is distinguishable. Okay? Meaning to say po, say for example, we have um, substance A and substance B. Pinaghalo natin sila into a mixture. Okay? Nakikita pa rin po natin or na-identify natin ng madali si A and B. For example, uh, say for example, pinaghalo po natin ang sand and then pebbles. Okay? So, parehas silang solid. So, pag pinaghalo po yung dalawa or nilagay natin sa isang container, ginawa natin mixture si sand and pebbles. So, we have a sand, pebble, litter box. Say for example, a litter box. Pag tinignan mo po yung sand, pebble, litter, litter box, okay, hindi ko alam kung paano ginagawa yung litter box, but nonetheless, sand and pebble, pinaghalo natin, nakikita mo pa rin na ito yung sand, na ito yung part na pebbles. Heterogenous. Yun yung ikasabi sabihin na lacks uniform composition. Hindi uniform. Okay? Hindi sila, um, hindi uniform yung composition, na-identify mo pa rin. Ayan. Lacks uniform composition and components are identifiable. Ayan yung keyword. Yung components po ay nakikita or na-identify na pa natin. Another example, sige. Uh, sige, water. So, water, liquid yan. Water and then rocks. So, we all know, water is liquid and rocks will be solid. So, meron ka ngayong um, water, rock, um, mixture. Ito ay isang uri pa rin po ng heterogeneous dahil lacks uniform composition. Sa so, water rock mixture na yan, meron kang liquid and solid. Hindi uniform. Okay? Kasi kung sinabi uniform, dapat iisa lang. Pero sa so, water rock mixture, dalawa. Merong liquid part, merong solid part. And then, another keyword, components are identifiable. Nakikita pa rin natin, nadidistinguish pa rin natin si water and then si rock, kahit na pinaghalo natin sila. Yun po ang heterogeneous. Okay? So, that is mixture, homogeneous, and heterogeneous. Examples for homogeneous mixture, para po mas klaro pa. Homogeneous mixture are the following. We have here a bar of chocolate. Now, in this part, we know that a bar of chocolate is composed of different ingredients. And when we see a bar of chocolate, we cannot easily identify the sugar part, the cocoa part, and even the cream or the milk part. Homogeneous mixture. Same thing with a gravy. We cannot easily identify other ingredients. And same thing with coffee. With coffee, we cannot identify the coffee ground or the coffee beans and even the water part, even the sugar. Diba? Homogeneous. Okay? As the keyword suggests, uh, the prefix, diba? Uniform composition. Heterogeneous mixture, say for example, you have here a, um, ito yung ginagamit yung sa mga malalaking boxes na nabibili sa grocery, yung mga malalaking boxes ng um, biscuits, diba? Ay, na-identify natin. Yung pretzels, yung, um, say for example, yung um, feet, yung fita um, biscuit, we can easily identify the components. Same thing this one, oil and water, okay? Hindi sila na totally mix And then cereal, you have liquid milk. 
and then the cereal being solid, heterogeneous. Hindi uniform ang composition na identify at nakikita pa rin natin yung mga pinaghalo. Okay? Now, let's talk about physical change. Now, as defined, physical change is easily defined as any change that does not lead to the formation of new substance. Now, physical change will be the label, okay, if change that leads to no formation of new substance. As long as wala pong bagong substance na nabobuo, that will be physical change. Physical changes involve only, okay, only a change in the physical properties and not its composition. Please take note that in a physical change, only the physical properties um, changes, say for example, the size, the texture, the shape, okay? Mga physical properties lang po ang nag-iiba and not the composition. Physical changes or processes such as melting, freezing, evaporation, and condensation are some of the examples of processes on how we can do physical changes. Melting, um, solid to liquid, yung yellow na solid, um, undergo sa heat ay maging liquid water. Physical change yun. H2O, composition pa rin naman siya, pero yung uh, physical properties niya ay nag-iba. Okay? Now, what about chemical change? Now, chemical change, now this occurs when a substance reacts and produces one or more new substances. The key word for chemical change is that as long as there will be a new product, either one or more, that will be entailing a chemical change. Below the slide will show you indicators or evidences for chemical change. Mga palatandaan na nagsasabing chemical change ang nangyayari. Evolution of gas, bubbles in a reaction, nagkakaroon po ng bula. Okay? Evolution of heat. There will be a release or absorption of energy. Okay? Third change in color, nag-iiba ang kulay. Nakikita natin ito sa mga nabubulok na pagkain. Okay? Nag-iiba yung chemical composition. Say for example, yung... Um, uh, say for example, uh, hindi na lang siguro pagbulok na pagkain. Siguro yung pagra-ripe, ripening of fruit. Pag hindi pa um, ripe yung banana or even yung manga, di ba nag-iiba yung color nila? Pag nag yung color, that indicates chemical change. Outdoor production, yan, ayan, under, another evidence is outdoor production. Say for example, ayun nga, um, spoiling of food, alam mong hindi na yun yung dapat mo kainin kasi nag iba na yung amoy. May something na, so tigil-tigil mo na, wag mo na kainin. <laughs> okay, next one. Formation of precipitate. Now what, now what, this, uh, what is this? Now, when we say formation of precipitate, precipitate meaning to say may insoluble solid na nabuo. Insoluble solid. May mga buo-buo na biglang uh, um, sumulpot dyan sa substance mo. Don't worry. The, there will be a slide showing you some of the examples. Ayan. This is an example of formation of bubbles, evolution of gas. This one is change in color, yung ripening of fruit, as we know that one. This one is... Formation of precipitate, yan po ay, say for example, um, nakalimutan mong inumin yung tinimpla mong gatas, na, nakatulugan mo, pagising mo, wow, may buo-buo na. Formation of precipitate na yun. Uh, in this example, that will be curd. Curding, curdling or curding of milk na moo. Okay? Next one is evolution of heat and then other production. Okay? Alam mo namang um, bulok or... Na, hindi na good for consumption ang food kapag may amoy na. And even with chemical ano, reactions, pag may evolution of product, may evolution of odor or may odor production, may bagong scent na na-produce yung chemical reaction, that indicates chemical change. Okay? Now, that's it. That is actually um, matter and its properties as presented by... This PowerPoint presentation, and I hope everyone um, learn, learned a thing or two about matter and its properties, particularly the states of matter, the differences of solids, liquids, and gases, as well as the um, classification of matter under which of your substances and mixtures, and also evidences and examples for physical and chemical change. Okay? Thank you for watching and viewing this lecture video, and again, I hope you learned a thing or two.
Thank you and have a great day.